The All Progressives Congress will today gather to elect the party's candidate to fly the party's flag in the governorship election slated for October 10, 2020. Eleven governorship aspirants will be jostling for this position and about 3,000 delegates are expected to participate in the primary. Well, joining us from Undo State is CBC News senior political correspondent Ayo Dili Uzuga. Good morning, Ayo. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good, good morning. Quickly bring us morning, up Veronica. to speed yeah. with uh, the level of preparation and what the atmosphere is towards today's uh, primaries. Veronica is indeed the final day for the governorship election as far as, as far as the All Progressive Congress is concerned to choose a candidate. There are 12 people jostling for this position. As of yesterday night, one actually stepped down for the incumbent governor, that is Governor Oluwaruti Miyakere Dolu. As it is now, we have like um, 11 aspirants that will be jostling to become candidates at the end of today. And the governor of Kogi State, Yaya Bilu, is actually the chairman of the organizing committee, the people that will actually super, super advice over the um, election of today. Now the format is that in, across the 18 local governments in the countries, they have three senatorial districts there that people are going to come from and there are designated areas that they are going to go for their accreditation. This morning at about 8 a.m., they will start going to the accreditation centers and after fully accredited, they will now converge at the dome. That's the central zoning point in Alagbaka area of Akure. That is where the voting proper is going to happen. And I have to tell you that most of the aspirants are not so happy about the mode of um, these primaries. Before today, they've written to the chairman of the organizing committee, they written to the caretaker committee chairman, that's uh, the Yobe state governor, and they've registered their displeasure that look that they prefer the direct mode of primaries. I, one of the aspirants actually described it as, you know, subversion of the party constitution. I don't know what it means by that, but I know that in the party constitution or the All Progressive Congress, there is consensus, there is direct primary, there is indirect primary. It depends on whichever one the stakeholders will, will choose. And the stakeholders now by the caretaker committee, they are now saying that the mode that will be adopted is indirect primaries. 3,000 delegates will be involved. 3,000 delegates from 18 local governments from across the country will actually make sure, choose who will become the candidate for the All Progressive Congress. And they're going to go through the process of accreditation. In the next one out now, they've um, chosen some areas that they are going to go according to your senatorial district. And by the time you finish the accreditation, they're going to convey them, they're going to take them. I have my correspondent in those state here, Ayode Jimurade, he has been on ground. Ayo has been monitoring this process and um, ahead of the October 10 governorship election. Ayo, today is the D-Day. <laughs> yes, today is the D-Day and the gladiators are ready uh, to slog it out at the international event center known as the Dome. Yes, like you said, like as you said, uh, one of the aspirants, engineer Ifeo Dele, stepped down uh, for Governor Roti Miyake Dolu. He said he's ready to work together with him to ensure that he emerges as the party's uh, flag bearer. At that meeting, I was at the meeting uh, where Governor Yayabelu presided, and he told them that he has no power uh, to postpone the election because some of the aspirants pushed for the postponement. They said they were not properly briefed. They don't have the list of the delegates. But they said uh, what he has been mandated to do is to ensure that uh, a primary is conducted peacefully. And that is what uh, he told them. Like, as you said, uh, the event will take place at the International Event Center. And the people are expected, the delegates, after they have been accredited, they will move into the center where they will all vote uh, for the candidate, for the aspirant of their choice. And that is the situation for now. All right, so we are just counting down. At about 10 a.m., we move to the dome where the voting proper is going to take place. And don't forget, I told you that. 3,000 people will be involved in this exercise. That means delegates across 18 local governments of, of, on those states. And ultimately, we don't expect that um, the thing will tarry longer than today. We don't expect a spillover. All right. What we're experiencing at the time. let me stay with you on this issue of uh, the controversy around indirect and direct uh, 
primary election or the mode of voting. Now, some of the aspirants say that they all came together to agree that the party will conduct the primary elections based on the direct uh, voting format. And now that has changed. Now, that is part of why they feel that uh, this is a subversion after they have agreed and signed. Uh, uh, what effort is the party making to reconcile that? Or is it, is it just clear that anything has been done about that? According to Governor Yaya Bello, he's saying that they cannot dictate for the party. I think the caretaker committee actually, in their own wisdom, actually decided that looking at the situation on ground, you know, I told you there's no hard and fast rule on how to choose a candidate in the All Progressive Cong um, Congress. We have the direct primaries, the indirect primaries, and consensus, whichever one suits your purpose. So, but these people, these aspirants are saying that, look, this has been contrived to favor the incumbent governor. That's Governor Lua Roti Miyakere Dolu, that there might not be transparency in this delegate system. They want a situation whereby it's the um, uh, party members across the 18 local government that will be able to decide who flies the party is, um, 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 card in October 10, 2012. So what we're looking at here is that in spite of their petition, in spite of their insistence, the National Working Committee has said that no, today is the D-Day and they are going to adopt the indirect primaries. And the way I'm saying it, there's no going back. Okay. Hi, right. Ozubaku, thank you very much for bringing us up to speed on this. We'll certainly keep a tab on what's going on. Absolutely. In Ondo State. It's really interesting sometimes. The point is, <laughs> elections in Ondo State and even Edo State are typically or very diff or peculiarly peculiar. dramatic. Peculiar, that's the word. Yeah. Peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> peculiar. And uh, the, the, the party is saying that it is trying to ensure mm. that uh, it brings about, because there is a reconciliation committee yeah. that has been trying to bring parties together, yeah. all the factions yeah. together, to ensure that at least uh, what the party intends to achieve mm. is achieved. Whether they all agree is another thing altogether. But they altogether. say that politics is conflict <laughs> resolution of who gets what, democracy. when and how. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, the All Progressives Congress will today gather to elect the party's candidate to fly the party's flag in the governorship election slated for October the 10th. Now, 11 governorship aspirants will be jostling for this position, and about 3,000 delegates are expected to participate in the primaries. Joining us now from Mondo State is TVC News senior political correspondent Ayodele Ozubaku. Ayo, it is good to have you join us uh, right now. Uh, I wonder what the feelers are. There has been a lot of drama even since the, the deputy governor, uh, uh, Agbola, de defected to the People's Democratic Party. There has been a lot of, you know, upturn of, of, of events in Ondo State. Bring us up to speed on that. Okay, let's talk about the All Progressive Congress now. I can tell you that we have 12 of the aspirants, you know, jostling for to be the candidate of the party ahead of the October 10th governorship election. And I told you earlier that they have their reservation about the mode of election for today. But I have two aspirants here. I have Mr. Sholaiji here with me, and I have Chief Kekemeke also here with me, Mr. Iji. You've been telling us about what are your expectations for today's election? Yeah, we expect that uh, the, the committee will, uh, will do justice uh, to the procedure. Uh, we are not too pleased with uh, the arrangements up to date. Um, the indirect primaries? Oh, the indirect primaries, we had asked for uh, direct primaries. Uh, and for good reasons, because uh, to have indirect primaries, there are provisions of the Constitution which ought to be complied with, and which uh, the party, uh, as represented by the committee, had not, uh, uh, had not complied with. And we thought that... Uh, in other words, have you lost faith in today's process? Uh, not completely in the process. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm only saying the processes leading to today ordinarily did not make provision for the use of indirect primaries uh, model when you know that we have not complied with the provision of our party's constitution. 
that's that's the grounds. Is this against the law? It's the like, indirect primaries? Is it not in your constitution? No, the, the, it is in the constitution. But what the constitution has provided for is for us to make a choice. If we are not going by consensus and we are not going by direct, when we choose indirect uh, primaries, we must first hold congresses, ward congresses, for the election of the delegates that will go to the electoral college. Hmm. That has come to the electoral college hmm. in the state capital because it's a state constituency election. Okay. I want yeah, to, that has not been I want you to hold your thought there. Mr. Kekimeke, do you have any problem with the delegate list? Some of the aspirants are saying they've not seen the list of the over 3,000 delegates and it's your, it's your right to see the list ahead of today's exercise. I said as much to Governor Yaya Bello and his team. Uh, they were handing the delegate list to us at 11.20. 11 11.20. 20. 20. I PM. received mine at 11.22 p.m. on the 19th of uh, July, that is yesterday night. And I was seeing the guidelines for the first time at about 11.22 uh, p.m. For me, this process is unfair. It is aimed at uh, producing a predetermined result. What do you mean by a predetermined result? Let's get it clear. Because all the, that we have heard about these elections have been heard through government officials, sources that are friendly or are campaigning for the governor to return. He knows when it is going to be what, he knows when it is going to be local government headquarters, and he does know when it is going to be at the state capital and where in the state capital. As I talk to you, we don't even know where accreditation is taking place. We don't know. We don't just know. As I talk to you, we want to submit the list of people who represent us at these accreditation centers. We don't know. Have you lost confidence in today's exercise totally? I have lost confidence in the process. I'm, it's not about who wins or who loses. What I'm saying is that those who lose must lose fairly, and those who win must win fairly. A party must not subvert its process and must not treat its members as if the members need the party to survive much more than the party needs its members to survive. I think the party needs its members to survive much more than it thinks the members need it to survive. A party must learn to be fair. A level playing ground has not been provided. It doesn't matter, even if I win, and this is what I'm going to say, this is not a fair thing to do. You do not conduct an election where you have collected money from people, where you have screened them, and you do not let them know where the election is taking place, how the election is going to take place, when the election is going to take place, and you only call them to a meeting at 11.22 and speak to them as if you are speaking to boys. And I'm happy that we told Governor Yaya Bilo and his team that we are not boys. We deserve some respect as leaders of this party. Thank you so much, sir. S strong, strong words there from the aspirants, two of the aspirants, Mr. Sholaiji and um, Dr. Isaac Skekemeke. You can see this will give you a feel of what is going to happen today at the Dome. I told you we have 12 aspirants that are going to just to become the candidates at the end of the day, but you can see two of them now. We'll go to the Dome, and when we go to the Dome, we promise to be giving you updates on what, whatever unveils at the end of the day. But this is the situation here in Akure on Dostet. Ayo, mm. thank you so much for bringing us up to speed. We'll definitely keep a tab on developments from Ondo.